Hi, I'm Kyleen. And I'm Jonathan, and we are the Provident Preppers. Is space or expense keeping you from having a working root cellar? Cold storage or root cellar is a fantastic way to extend the life of fresh fruits and vegetables. In many cases, you can store fall harvest clear through till the spring. That's right. In this video, we'll talk about some great ideas for storing your fresh fruits and vegetables in a variety of places, including right here in the ground. So stay tuned. This video discusses cool ideas for inexpensive and easy to make root cellars. We hope that you'll look at the post that this is based off of. It's the Provident Prepper, Inexpensive Root Cellars, 13 Literally Cool Ideas to Chill With. Because we've got more ideas there than we have in this video. And make sure you look at the show notes at the end. It'll have these links there so you don't have to write them down now. Basic principles of root cellar design. When we're talking about all of these creative ways to build root cellars, it is really important that you understand the basic principles of building a cold storage that will work as a root cellar. The first one is that it needs to be cool. As cool as you can keep it, but not freezing. Ideal is around 40 degrees, which means that you need to strategically locate it in a place that is on the north side of the house, shady, cool, things like that. It's gotta be humid, and the humidity needs to be regulated. It can't be waterlogged, and it can't be dry. Dark. Light promotes the growth and deterioration of your produce, so as dark as you can get it. Ventilated. Good ventilation will increase the life of your produce because it, your produce is living, right? It off gases. And so by allowing ventilation to remove those gases, it will really help to extend that life. And accessible. A root cellar or cold storage needs to be accessible so that you will use those foods that you have stored. Here you can see our buried freezer root cellar, and there's a post that talks about this. We'll refer you to that uh, towards the end. But this has been an amazing tool for us to overwinter beets and potatoes and carrots. In fact, it works so well that we are planning to build another one. We have acquired our freezer and now we just need to dig. This is another picture of it. This was in the construction process. You can see the gooseneck vents. You can see the retaining wall that will come up on the back side up to the level of the, the top of the freezer there. In the inset picture there, you can see the screen that covers those gooseneck vents. We don't want mice or critters getting in there. Spiders can get in there, but we haven't had much of a problem. If we were concerned about that, we'd go to a little tighter mesh. But this has worked really well. And this is a picture of it in its completed state with a pallet that we made on top and then straw bales on top for some insulation with a tarp that sheds the water off that. Again, this has been just an amazing tool. Paul is a fantastic gardener. And one of the things that he loves to do, this is his method for overwintering vegetables in a garden row. This is a row of carrots and he puts a tarp on it and weights that tarp down with bricks so that it won't blow away and so that it's easily accessible. The way that he gets the insulation is by cutting off the tops of the carrots that he has already harvested. So when you looked at that row, it was actually twice that long and they bottle and dehydrate and eat fresh the other half of the row. And so they've cut all the tops off and they actually use those tops to provide the insulation underneath the tarp. Pretty cool idea. That was Paul's method, which was ingenious and quite a bit of work. But now that Emily is on her own, she needs something that's a little bit less work. And so this is what she's devised. Emily fills the lawn bags with leaves. And then the row of carrots, she just plops those lawn bags right on top of the row of carrots. You can see some of their little tops poking out. This provides fantastic insulation for these carrots. So when she's ready to go dig it up during the winter, she just removes one of the bags and digs up what was under the bags. Fantastic, easy solution. This is one of our years when we were experimenting with storing our carrots and beets in, in rows. The tarp that we used was actually repurposed that we had used in the garden earlier to grow some vine crops on the ground. And we just put layers of leaves. We beg our neighbors, anybody who wants to get rid of their fall leaves, we beg them to come to our house because we love to use them for mulch. But we weighted it down with T-posts and with 
pieces of wood that we were actually using as garden paths. This is a picture from this year. We have evolved. So now we are using the bags, the big black bags, and we're putting the leaves in the big black bags, but we get the leaves wet and then we puncture those bags. And the really cool thing about this is not only does it serve the purpose of covering our root crop, but in the springtime, we will have compost that is well on its way to be fit, being finished, all because we put in a black bag with moisture and leaves. Works fantastically well. But you can see where we've already harvested down that row and all that we have left to harvest. And this is just a picture of a previous year when we were doing a method of both. We were experimenting with the leaves in the bags and we were still covering with the tarp and we're digging up carrots. You can see a whole milk crate of carrots there. Very easy to dig them up. One of the really cool things to me is when I pull those bags off or the tarp off, there's worms and all kinds of soil creatures just going crazy under there. So their life just goes on under there like it was all year. This is just what it looks like when we're going to dig up those carrots. You can see how the stems are missing the light and so they've turned yellow and some of them have died back. But the carrots that are in there are just beautiful and delicious. Very easy to harvest them once you get the bag off. Uncle George uses a metal garbage can. There are holes drilled in the bottom of the metal bucket for drainage. And what George does is he puts a layer of leaves, then he puts his beets, this is for his beets. He's cut the tops off his beets, left about an inch of the stem, and then he, he adds a layer of beets, then a layer of leaves, and a layer of beets, and a layer of leaves, and then he ends with a layer of leaves for insulation. Then he puts that metal lid back on, and he puts the pallet over it, and he covers the pallet with a layer of leaves for insulation. The really cool thing about this, is when he harvests his beets in the fall, he still has good fresh beets through spring, through March and through April, and it does a very good job. This is another friend of ours who chooses to use a 15 gallon plastic barrel. And the interesting, I wish I had a picture of the inside. I apologize, I only took a picture of the top of it. But when you take off this lid, he has holes drilled in the sides of the barrel as well as the bottom. And what he does is he puts all of his potatoes in there and then tops it with a layer of leaves and puts this lid on. He does not put anything on top of this lid and yet he it gets well below zero here and he reports that it does not freeze in the winter. He does have that layer of leaves on top of the potatoes inside, a nice thick layer, but it works really well. And the cool thing about this, it's not very hard to dig a hole for a 15 gallon barrel. They're not that big. You could have a whole line of these on the north side of a building or in a shady location and have one for potatoes and one for apples and one for pears and one for beets or whatever it is that you want to store. This is a really cool idea, very easy to access. The Farm Security Administration put this out many, many years ago when they were trying to help farmers understand how they could store some of their crops when they ran out of space. A pit, bank, or mound is a good place for storing apples, root crops, and cabbage if the cellar or cave will not hold them all. Choose a well-drained location, put a layer of straw on the ground, and pile vegetables on top of it. Uh, the one on the left has some type of ventilation system which will take fresh air from the top and allow it to circulate through the crop that is inside. The one on the right hand side actually just used straw to accomplish the same purpose. Very interesting. So the straw's on the bottom, then they're putting the crop on, a leather layer of straw, and then covering in dirt. And I think the thing on the top is actually a tarp. That would make a lot of sense to me. But you can do this. You can do it on top of the ground. You can dig a pit in the ground and the layer of straw on the bottom, put your crops in, and then layer on the top. You are limited only by your knowledge of the principles and your imagination. We decided to experiment one year with a window well. This is a window well on the north side of our house. We put a sheet of OSB over the window well and then covered it with straw for a couple reasons. One, for insulation, but two, to actually weight down that OSB to make sure that it stayed in place through some of the windy winter storms. As you can see inside the window well, we put the different vegetables that we wanted to store inside of milk crates 
inside the window well so that they would be easier. We could store more that way and they would be easier to take out. This actually worked very well. We did have to put mouse traps in there because mice were really able to get into that window well. One problem that we noticed, there was too much light getting into the window well. Those were darkening curtains that we purchased to put in front of it. But in the future, if we were to do this again, we would put some type of cardboard over the window, something to make sure that it was very dark in that window well, and then that produce would last longer. I was invited into this very old home, and I was so excited with this little tiny root cellar that they had in the home. So this is a basement family room, and this is the paneling on the wall that we're looking at, and it's kind of hidden. I didn't notice it until they pointed out to me that there was a root cellar in here. So when you open these doors, you see this. It's a little white door with a window in it. Up in the upper right hand corner, that box is a light switch. There's a little light switch. And in the center on the right there, that's the handle to open it. My apologies for the blurry picture. But then you push that door open and this is what you see on the bottom. Do you see how they have created a little boxed area? to store things. They've got a little pallet in there and that's dirt on the bottom to help control the humidity. That uh, up at the top, you see the white, that is the door and the little dark spot there, that is the bottom of the window. It's, it's actually very small. This is so cool. It could hold about 200 pounds of potatoes. This is inside the front porch, this little old house. When you arrive at it, you go up the sidewalk and then you walk up the stairs to the front door and the, the little concrete path where the porch is, this is actually inside of that. So just a great idea for a very small amount of storage that serves a great purpose. Some friends of ours are experts at growing winter squash and this is how they store it. They have an unused basement bathroom and they keep the window cracked all winter long very slightly for both airflow and to make sure that it's cool in there. Squash requires a bit of a different storage environment than potato. This is an ideal environment for this winter squash and it can store for well over a year like this. They've purchased these inexpensive plastic shelves. You can see one of them is actually placed inside of the bathtub. They clean the squash before storing it with a very light Clorox and water solution. They just want to make sure that they clean it, get rid of any bacteria that's going to grow. And then they stack these so that they aren't touching each other and there's plenty of airflow. And that is the way that they extend the life of this produce. Fantastic idea. They're really good at this. In our basement storage room, this is actually our food storage room where we store all of our food. We have a designated area where we keep the produce. By storing it in our basement, while it's not the ideal location, we extend the life of our fruits and vegetables that we've purchased at the store significantly as compared to our pantry upstairs. You can see we've got the onions will store for months down there and even the watermelon and the cantaloupe and the pineapple. I can go ahead when the pineapple's on sale, I can buy six or eight of them because I know I don't have to use them within a week or two. They'll store down there for several months and be very delicious by the time we use them. If you have no other place to do it, a plastic tote can be your best friend. Ideally, you would want to use sawdust in this. You put sawdust in the bottom of the tote and then a layer of potatoes or apples or whatever it is you want to store and then another layer of sawdust. You don't want them to be touching if at all possible and you just keep layering it and then you end with a layer of the sawdust or the straw and put the lid on it. Believe it or not, you could put this in your a basement storage room. You could put it in a closet on the north side of your house. You can store this in your garage and it will significantly extend the life of the produce that you put in there. Is it as good as an, a regular root cellar? No, it's not ideal. But you would be amazed how long you can get food to store this way. We encourage you to experiment with some of these ideas. These allow you to extend the storage on especially your root crops and apples and things like that. But these are just a wonderful way to have good fresh produce clear through the winter. There are links in the show notes for you. But if you want to Google the Provident Prepper inexpensive root cellar ideas, 13 literally cool ideas to chill with, there are a lot of ideas there that we don't cover in this video. So you might want to take some time to check that out. Also, the Provident Prepper chill in in our DIY buried freezer root cellar. These both have a lot of really good information, a lot of really great ideas, and we encourage you to use some of these. 
With a little bit of knowledge and creativity, you have the ability to create your own cold storage or root cellar that can keep your produce good throughout the winter. And now for the questions of the day. What success have you had in creating a root cellar? And what fantastic ideas have you seen that our viewers might be interested in? Thanks for being part of the solution.